talked a little bit about SEO going away. It's not really going away, but SEO as we knew it a few, a few months ago, really, it's kind of gone now. Um, inbound marketing in its entirety is t is, uh, has swallowed SEO and inter internet marketing and paid, paid search, paid search marketing and offline marketing. It swallowed that whole world because of the way that we can measure things. Content marketing, we touched on content marketing earlier, but these are some examples, blog articles, white papers. You guys talked about press releases? You mentioned that earlier, y'all had just talked about that. Press releases, both offline press releases, old school, old school is a bad term because press releases are not going away. The media is still out there and they still like them. A little bit different formats now, but they still like them. And there's also online press releases. There are online press release um, services, 1-888-PRESS-RELEASE and PR News and PR Newswire, and there's tons of online press release systems out there. Ebooks, webinars, videos, podcasts, it's all great content for folks to absorb out in the world. So content marketing, if we had to choose anything to do, if we have a very limited budget and, we, and a, a, one of our clients or one of your clients or a company you goes to, go to work for has a very limited budget and they just can't do everything, this is the one piece that you need to do, content marketing. You have to have good information out on the internet. If you don't have good quality information out on the internet, visitors are not gonna like you, Google's not gonna like you, Bing's not gonna like you, your paid advertisers coming in are not gonna like you, your partners, your business partners are not gonna like you, and then of course also potential clients are not gonna like you. So if you don't have the money to worry about anything else, say you don't have the money to hire um, a social media person, um, to actually go out and make sure everything's on Facebook and Pinterest and um, Google Plus and all over the place. That's okay, we save that if we have a priority list, but we do not cheat content marketing. Content marketing is more important than anything there is to do in the inbound marketing world. And remember, inbound marketing world is traditional advertising, online advertising, and the whole measurement piece too, sales all the way down to the sales team. So this is still the most important piece. Inbound links coming back into your website or your blog into the entity that you control. Let me point that out. The entity that you can control. You can't control Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg can do whatever the hell he wants to with Facebook. We saw it by the timeline he just made us use a couple weeks ago. He can do anything. It goes offline quite a bit. Google Analytics goes offline quite a bit. We cannot control those free entities out on the web. Twitter goes offline every once in a while. A lot of times, you know, it gets too busy and the Emmys and the Super Bowl and blah, 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 it goes offline. We can't control those entities. So you want to make sure that you have a vested interest into the entity you can control, your website and your blog, because you control that on whether you pay your bill to your hosting company or not. And that's the only way it'll, it will not be online. So we want to make sure that your website is is steady and standard and always up and the content is there that you want on there. So inbound links coming back in to your entity from business partner websites, referral websites like um, the social bookmarking websites, um, the press release websites, they, they would fit into the referral and um, Facebook, Google Plus, that kind of thing, they would fit in here. Social signals. Social signals we've talked about, um, the biggest Social website out right now for making money on the internet, not for us out there playing, doing our own thing, talking to mom and grandma, keeping mom and grandma away from what we're doing on Facebook, but um, for making money on the internet, Google Plus. There's nothing even close to Google Plus right now because it's owned by Google. And Google is saying our social community that is brand new is more important than Facebook, it's more important than Twitter, it's more important than Pinterest. Um, I don't know if you guys have been to, I should have done a screen capture of this. There's a new piece to Google's um, search results screen now where you can actually see results. If you go in and type, I don't know, anything, um, inbound marketing agency in Hampton Roads, and you get all these search results coming back. And over on the left side, this is up for you guys. Over on the left side, there are little icons, or little head icons, or maybe it tells you that one of your friends liked this link at some point or they plus one to the, or that kind of thing. That's the Google search engine reading Google Plus and what's going on inside of here. 
and it actually moves those links up ahead of all of those people that have done SEO. It'll bump up websites that have been shared on Google Plus and put them on page one way above any folks that have done a lot of hard work in SEO and spent a lot of money with SEO shops over time. It'll put them right up ahead of those guys. We've seen them go up as, as far quickly to the number two um, link on the page on page one on Google because of Google Plus. So if you're out, if your company's there to make money on the internet, you have to be on Google Plus. Get rid of everybody else if you can't spend the money on it, but Google Plus is number one. I have a question on that. So in other words, because the, um, the using the Google Plus for the ranking, like with the heads on the left, would depend on your friend networks, right? Yes. So in other words, it's actually a personalized ranking for everybody. Uh, you can be high, ranking high for certain type of individuals, but not necessarily for others. That is correct. Versus SEO would be uh, across the High for area. most, yeah. What we found out the last half of last year before this um, search plus your world and social signals got hot in December, January, we actually found Google doing that with the regular search results. You could go over here in Virginia Beach and go over here in Norfolk and hop on two different networks and get different rankings. And they were playing with that kind of thing. So yes, that is accurate, but we still think there's preference in there too. For a long time, we even thought there was preference on whether you're paying Google and pay-per-click ads. That it, it would also move domains up higher. We thought at one point that we could actually prove it, but then you know they changed some things behind the scenes and you can't really figure it out. But you got to kind of assume Google's in, in the business to make money. Same with Microsoft and Bing and Yahoo for their search engine. They're in it to make money. And if you're spending money through their pay-per-click system or if you're in their social community, they're trying to, to build up ahead of Zuckerberg's Facebook, they're going to give you preference. Um, they can't really come out and say it, but they're going to give you preference, and we're pretty sure that's happening also. So, that makes sense to everybody? There's a question mark right here, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. I'm kind of almost done, I think. Um, I'm going to talk about this in a second, possibly what's next. That question mark right there is big. We've got to keep thinking what's next. Uh, who knew three months ago that there was going to be anything like Pinterest come out? And look at its popularity now, those of you that have been out there on it. I mean, it's just crazy, the people that are on pictures right now. So for certain industries, we can see where Pinterest is going to be good for business. For other industries, it's probably not going to make a difference. But you know, if you're in the retail clothing industry or if you're Zappos and your main product is shoes, of course, something like Pinterest is going to be huge. So we got to keep our eye out on what's next. And we've talked about SEO. Because we're listing um, the most important criteria for inbound marketing today, we can't rule this out. It's still got to be done. Remember what I said back earlier. It's either a yes, no. You're either doing, your, doing it right or you're doing it wrong, and that's going to keep you on the page with everybody else if you're doing it right. So you can't just eliminate it and not do it. Paid search, still there. Um, it's not going to go away. These guys are making too much money off of it. But one of the main things I wanted to put up was you can do paid search even on Twitter now. That just got released last week, I believe, to the public, to all small businesses now where you can do paid ads on Twitter. Um, but remember, when you do Microsoft ads, you're now on Bing.com, Yahoo.com, and Flickr, all the entities that they own. So they're all the same. And the same with Google. You're even on YouTube and MySpace because they're all part of that Google network. So. When you start getting into pay-per-click, something else that you could talk about forever, you know, building campaigns and things like that on pay-per-click and what works and what doesn't um, and what kind of audiences you get to pay-per-click. Because, let me go back to it for a second, um, I, I gave you an example of how much pay-per-click can cost at some times if you're not smart. Uh, if your campaigns are not smart and you're just bringing in trashy traffic to your website, it can sometimes cost you tons of money and you're not getting quality leads out of it. So you have to be really smart um, when you start talking about pay-per-click. I wanted to make sure and bring this term up to you guys, social, social graphics. It's a new term in our industry, relatively new term, um, and pretty much it's about like demographics. Uh, demographics, we know, marketing 101, 
what age, our potential audience, what age, um, what race, what religious background, what, um, uh, how much money, household money they're making, that kind of thing. So the typical demographics, we'll turn that over online. Since we're doing a lot of internet advertising, we need to know where our, our customers are hanging out online. Who trusts them? Think LinkedIn. Um, all of you guys have LinkedIn accounts? If you, don't, if you don't have a LinkedIn account and you're on the way to heading out in the business world, get in it now so that by the time you get out there and the HR department is researching you, you have a solid LinkedIn profile. Better than your resume. By the time, probably the undergrads now, by the time they get out of grad school, that five or six years from now, paper resumes won't be around anymore. Everything will be on LinkedIn. So you guys make sure you have your LinkedIn profiles. Um, so LinkedIn, who likes you? Who doesn't like you? Who are you influencing? What types of crowds are you influencing? And um, who trusts you? And I'm going to close right here with this one before I move to the next screen. Make sure that when you're studying social graphics, don't get too hung up about the tools and technology. Make sure that your strategies are solid. Focus on your strategies, not the tools and technology. And I'm going to stop right here with this one, Google Wave and Google Buzz. You guys, those, you recognize those? There's a reason why most of you are saying no, because it came and went very fast. Google Wave, six months, four months, I don't know. Spent a lot of money on it. And if companies would have gone out like we've done, like we're talking about doing with Pinterest and placing a lot of efforts and a lot of dollars on these social communities, they would have been gone quick and a lot of wasted tens of thousands or millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if your strategies are set up right, if your ad campaigns are set up properly and you're measuring your results all the way through, it doesn't matter what ad medium that you advertise on, you're ready. If direct mailers go away, that's okay. Our concepts are set properly. We can go advertise on Orkut because Orkut is big in other countries and we know that we're trying to reach a Brazilian audience or an Indian audience in India. So it doesn't matter. We just apply this strategy and this ad campaign to those mediums, those ad, those, uh, ad mediums, those social communities. So don't concentrate on Facebook. Don't concentrate on Google Plus, as in don't do things specifically for Google Plus. Keep true to your ad campaigns. Then it doesn't matter where you apply your dollars on the mediums, because if it doesn't work, you can just move it to another one. Whereas if we would have built a Facebook team and everybody's concentrating on getting content on Facebook, and oh my gosh, they changed something else and businesses are no longer welcome and we're going back to the educational institutions. It, that's kind of extreme. I don't think that'll ever happen because now they're going public and they need money. But you see what I'm getting at? Don't concentrate just on a specific medium or a specific technology because in the internet world, they go away fast. And you want to make sure that your companies are not losing money based on the individual mediums. That was a lot. I know. I kind of moved fast and I was trying to get through it. There's tons more we could talk about for hours and hours and hours. But I want to make sure I covered you know, just an overview of everything that's going on. Any questions? We'll have the video, you guys, um, at, on our website. The slides are already there. Um, you can download the slides there. There are other presentations there, too. But any questions? Yes? I have two questions. Sure. Um, social signals, you talked about having a social landing page for individuals who are coming from your Facebook page. You know, there, is that the only way social signals are used with the special landing pages? Or is there other ways that you look at social signals? Social signals, um, the largest effect that social signals has is through raw search, organic search traffic. How social signals affects our rankings in Google and it's coming and being also in Yahoo. Um, social signals is, is, it's hard to measure, especially now. We haven't figured out the true way to measure it because it's so new and it's even changing. Um, I think you probably keep up with it some of the Google Panda algorithms that are changing. Almost every week we find something else that Google has released and changed that we don't, didn't know about the week before. So we haven't figured out the great and perfect ways to measure social signals yet. We just know it's important. And we know it's important that every piece of content our clients get out on the internet also get submitted to Google Plus so that it raises that social signal value. Um, we think Pinterest is probably going to come. I personally don't think that Pinterest is going to be given the weight that Google Plus has been given until somebody buys them. 
I see Pinterest being popular right now, and either um, Microsoft or um, Google is going to buy them, and they'll get sucked into whatever those search engines are doing, and then they'll become even more important. Um, so kind of the answer is we don't know yet. We have to keep playing with it, but we know it's very, very important to get out there and share that information, more so than it was six months ago. And you can imagine paying someone to go share information on the internet is just preposterous. As a business owner, no, I'm not paying somebody to submit our blog articles out on Facebook. No, I can't do that, but now we have to. You know, a, um, a social media strategist in our company and even a social media associate in our company is more important than they were six months ago. So we have to do it, so. Um, with the new, I guess not new, but with the ability for advertisers or customers of yours to be able to track the results that they're getting from each advertising campaign, right. do you think that that has made your job harder or easier to kind of justify? I mean, because now you could say, I put an ad in the newspaper, a million people saw it, I'm sorry you didn't get any calls. Right. Um, but now you can say, you know, X amount of people came to your website, now it's your fault you didn't close them. Right. Um, so does that make your job easier or harder or how do you? I think it, it makes agencies like ours more accountable. Where before, we've all probably seen admin. We know how ad agencies were back in the day. You know, our creative team goes and plays and they're the most important people in the company and they do their thing and they just celebrate for three days and you know, drink in their whatever, their margaritas and whatever. And, but we can't do that anymore because now we're able to measure. Does it make our job harder? Um, Probably not because the tools are adapting to help us get these numbers quicker and easier and in real time. We can actually get these, these types of calculation numbers in real time now. Um, so it's not really any harder, it's different. It's a different world now um, because we're, we're more accountable. Um, as a small agency, it's more fun um, because I can now compete on, not on the level that Martin Agency does. Does everybody know who the Martin Agency is? Um, they're, the largest advertising agency in Virginia and probably in the top five in the United States, and they're in Richmond, they're in Chaco Bottom. They did the Geico commercial, they've done all those, the cavemen, the, um, the little lizard thingy, whatever he is, um, and uh, they've done several other big ones I can't think of off the top of my head, but we can't compete on that level, but there are certain clients, there are small to medium sized businesses that this whole inbound marketing world has made us able to compete with companies that size now because we can do so many things that they can't do and we can do them faster. We're more flexible than they are. And it makes more sense for SMBs, small makes and medium-sized businesses. It's easier for those companies to come to smaller agencies like ours um, since we can do those kind of things. We can measure quick and we can readjust. And cool. Yes? In one of our recent readings, kind of commented on a, uh, a backlash against uh, commercial entities kind of imposing themselves in social worlds. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you seen that and how do you guys react to that? We have. We have. Um, I, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. Like businesses getting out on Facebook and destroying my timeline because I don't want to see all yeah, the businesses. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, let me tell you how we look at things like that. Um, when we set up a business page for any of our clients or even for us, I'm gonna use us as an example. Um, when we set up, we have our, our business page and we have, I don't know, high 900s of fans on our business page. Those folks have subscribed to our page for a reason. Either they like it or they're friends of friends and you know they just did. Um, so we consider them an attentive audience. And we load our Facebook page with, I don't know, some days every hour there's a new post of content information, actual content that gets out on our, on our Facebook page. People can read it or they can ignore it. Um, we've heard over time and we've even seen where you, you go back and forth losing fans and losing people that like your page. But I think over time now it's kind of equaled out. The people know that when they subscribe to a business, page on Facebook that they're going to get that kind of information from them. So I think Facebook's been around for so long now and even Google Plus it's starting that way and Twitter it's just all over the place. It's got everything out there. But people know now that when I fan a page I know what I'm going to get or they just don't fan it to begin with. 
Um, the good thing about Facebook is you're not, you are not gonna see it in your personal timeline unless you actually like that page. So it's not like it's obtrusive unless you want it to be obtrusive. So it, it's almost gone away now where before it, it hadn't. I mean, companies can actually go throw stuff out there. The privacy rules are so much more strict now that it's not really an issue very much. I can say that it's harder for companies now to build up their fan base on, let's stay with Facebook. It's harder for them to build up a fan base on Facebook because it's easy now for them not to be able to find potential consumers on Facebook, which I really I see that as a good thing because I use Facebook for business and for personal. And I don't, there's just some, I don't want a business to force themselves on my personal page unless I want to see them. Where back in the day they could, we I mean, can't do that anymore. So I think it's kind of gone away, I think. The average person on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus has probably gotten smarter too. They figured out how, not, how to get it off of their timeline and not have to worry about it or not accept the trash to fill up their timeline. You see new platforms developing and people may try to get away from the commercialization of Facebook and Google Plus. Like, I guess I read that Twitter was that at one point, but now they seem to be right. really commercializing their service. So yeah. will, it, will it just keep jumping? And yes, kind of I do think so. That? And that's kind of the way Google Plus is right now. Google Plus started out with a bunch of techies. And like when it was in its uh, closed environment, when you had to have an invite to get on Google Plus, man, it was filled with so many techie type people. The average person wasn't on Google Plus, and I really don't think they are now. Um, and then it opened up to businesses about the same time that it opened up to the public. So it's almost like every, everybody is in there, but the average Joe, social community guy, is not jumping over to Google Plus. They're staying on Facebook where they're comfortable. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen with Google Plus. They spent so much money now on Google Plus and wrapped it in through social signals into their Google search engine. It can't go away. There's no way. They're, they can't throw that much money away. Um, I think for businesses, it's going to end up just being that traffic driver that moves us up in the search engines, but we're not generating business or leads off of the actual Google Plus interface itself. I think we may start seeing the separation of things like that. But yeah, I, I mean, think Facebook at its inception. Of course, it came out for um, in, in the educational institutions first, um, but it was there because people didn't want to play on MySpace. Um, so people moved off of MySpace because of whatever, thousands of different reasons. We moved away from MySpace and AOL chat rooms even before that. And it was just another community that was built. Yeah, one day Facebook's gonna go away because there's a new one coming that does different things. You can even say the comparison of Facebook to LinkedIn. Totally different crowd. Totally operates differently, the rules are different. So all of these niche communities, yeah, I see tons more of them popping up. We talked several times about Pinterest. Um, that wasn't around three months ago, I guess, or at least it wasn't hot three months ago. Now it is, that niche community is gonna start popping up, so yeah. I see tons more of them coming. Um, going back to concentrate on your strategy, not the tools and technologies. If you're there to make money on the internet, you have to follow that. You can't get stuck on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, just one of them. You have to be able to adapt. Any other questions? Um, you guys have my business card here? Our business card's here. Scan if you have a QR code reader or it's got a landing page down here. It's got all my information. Um, I'll take emails, questions. You'll find me all over Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus too if you have questions. Or um, if you have questions, you can go to our website and ask too. I have another question. Sure. The, uh, I find it interesting that when you actually build a landing, landing page for one of your campaigns, mm -hmm. you would remove the navigation and force the consumer to basically stay on that page right. with maybe some exceptions. You did also mention that some of your clients didn't want to do that and they chose to, you know, just do a regular page. Right. Have you compared Not the very effectiveness? Often. Go ahead. Yeah, the, uh, is there any difference in effectiveness in between the two? Because to me, just as an outsider, when I look at the forced form over there, that's all you can really do on, this, on the page. Mm -hmm. As a consumer, I feel like I might be turned off by that. 
and I'm going to your website really trying to get more information. Right. But all I'm getting is a form asking me for information. So you are not giving me anything yet. Right. But you're asking me for more. Right. How do you justify necessarily that, and how do you see the difference in the return right. by doing that versus doing the other way? Okay. Um, one of the things you have to remember, and I hope I said this, I hope I didn't totally confuse you guys. One of the things that you have to remember about landing pages is you can't go to the website and get to a landing page. So it's not in the navigation area. If you just went to jsgroup.com, you can't get to a landing page. So the only way you can get to a landing page is to type it in or click a banner ad or something like that. So you're, you're, you, you're guaranteed that the audience that's on that landing page actually wants to be there and is very interested in the ad that they just came from. So because of that, they're coming there to actually say, hey, I'm interested. So that's why we provide them with only the web form to fill out. And then once they fill out the form, of course, the thank you page is a regular page. You know, it's got a bunch of information on it. It looks like the rest of the website. Now, to answer the first part of your question about have we done testing, we do A-B testing. That's what it's called with landing pages. We do A-B testing all the time. Um, and we have found a significant difference in whether we provide navigation or we don't we provide navigation. fill out that web form. Um, it doesn't seem to upset people that that's all they can do because that's why they came there to begin with. Um, they know coming to these landing pages and coming off of a pay-per-click ad or coming off of you know a direct mail or a newspaper ad or something like that. They know they're coming to get more information about the ad they just read or the ad they just heard on the radio or saw on television. So they're getting all that information on that landing page and they're either interested or they're not. If you do give them the option of clicking away from the original landing page, right. let's say they go off on the website to some other pages and then they go to another different contact page to eventually contact the company, right. is that a lost contact that the campaign itself not necessarily tracked? No, our analytics track that user all the way through the website. Okay. The only way we would lose them is if they go away from the website and actually close their web browser. They close right. the session. Right, exactly. We lose the cookie, and then we can't tell if it's them or not. But if they're coming to the landing page and they click and go all through the website and they come back, or if they fill out a contact form on another section, we still know where they entered the website. We still know where they came in, and we attribute them to that campaign still. So you do have a way of basically saying, let's say if you do keep the navigation on the page, mm -hmm. um, you can track for those who did do decide to click yes. away, what is the percentage of the conversion of those people there, and whether the conversion rate is any higher or any lower than the people who just does not have any choice of navigation. Yes, we can and we do, and we know that that rate is lower, is much lower if we give them a way to get away from that page. It's even lower than the people that leave, that. In, in our analytics profile, we can tell what the exit page is in, on any visitor. We know the last page they hit on the website. So those folks that hit the landing page and they're gone is a lower rate than the people that surf, that we allow them to surf through and then they leave on their own. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. You guys feel free. Email me um, if you have questions. Also, um, Twitter, as well as the group. Yes. So, Parnell K63. That's me on Twitter. Take this Thank back. You. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.